none the wiser then. The first controversial goal to be awarded in English professional football with the use of a video assistant referee might have been a clanger for all we knew at the final whistle. Glenn Murray pounces to grab a late winner for Brighton against Palace Crystal Palace players appealed long and hard that Glenn Murray's 88th minute winner had been finished off with his arm. But with replays appearing inconclusive on field ref Andre Mariner upheld his decision with the video official Neil Swarbrick holed up in a TV studio near Heathrow, presumably deciding that replays were inconclusive. Either that a Swarbrick had called out for a Chinese takeaway, cracked into a four-pack of lager from the local off-license and switched over to watch EastEnders Akari instead. Ref's chief Mike Riley had assured us that this new system would not be 100% perfect and he was proved spectacularly right from the word go. The ball appeared to brush off Murray's near the back post striker Murray crashed into the net after flicking in the winner against his old club. When Dale Stevens drilled Brighton in two to the lead in last night's FA Cup third round tie, there was no Neil Armstrong or Lee Harvey Oswald moment either. Swarbrick spoke into Mariner's earpiece, told him nothing and toward had occurred and the official in the middle indicated a goal. The first goal scored with VAR assistance in England didn't need need any assistance at all. There wasn't the slightest hint of any or offside or foul. Palace's back Risako netted a cracking second half equaliser before Murray bundled over the line late on with his knee and, perhaps, with a hint of an arm. For the first time in the 146-year history of competitive football in England, the referee's decision was no longer final. Instead Swarbrick, sitting in the warmth of his bunker while Mariner and the rest of us froze our conkers off on the south coast, was poised to overrule him on a goal, a penalty, a possible red card or a case of mistaken identity. Soon enough one of his remote refereeing colleagues will make a truly momentous intervention, perhaps even in the second game of this trial in tomorrow night's Chelsea v Arsenal Carabao Cup semi-final. Brighton celebrate a strike that sent them through to the FA Cup fourth round back Risako celebrates his leveller at the Amex with Patrick Van Arnholt whatever happens, though you won't hear much dissent about the VAR system on the TV. All TV companies are in favour of it because they want TV to become a key participant in the game, rather than merely an observer. And elite referees are all in favour because it means more jobs for elite referees. When the two old to run around the pitch any longer they can sit and judge from the comfort of a swivel chair. Even if the whole trial is a fiasco as it had been in last summer's Confederations Cup, it will be imposed on all matches before long. It is a fait accompli, nobody will dare to try and force the genie back into the bottle. Dale Stevens smashed in the opening goal for Brighton at the Amex Brighton's players celebrate Stevens' first half-strike against rivals Crystal Palace this grudge match, between two clubs who insist on calling it a derby despite all geographical evidence to the contrary, was a strange one on which to impose guinea pig status. Their managers Chris Hewton and Roy Hodgson did the best to take the sting out of the fixture by making a rough changes to two teams obsessed with avoiding relegation from the Premier League. Hewton made eight changes to the Brighton side, while Hodgson made the with four, as the cynics suggested Wilf Zaha was rested to avoid any pumbling controversies in the Brighton penalty area. There were thousands of empty seats in the home areas of the Amex Stadium and the reward of a fourth round visit to Tony Palace's Middlesbrough was not exactly the tastiest of carrots to add to the occasion. Watch the best goals from the FA Cup third round matches Sarko unleashes a superb strike from just over 20 yards against Brighton Palace fans celebrate their equaliser against their M23 rivals Brighton's Chelsea. Lonely Izzy Brown limped off with a knee injury after only five minutes following a crunching block tackle from Jeff Schlapp, with the Palace man, suffering the after-effects, also replaced soon after. Solly marches down with header pushed over the bar by Hennessy. At the opposite end a Sarko shot was saved by Tim Krull, then an Andros Townsend shot deflected wide by a diving defender, with Swarbrick apparently assuring Mariner that there had been no handball. On 26 minutes came the breakthrough as Ekiel Scalotto cutting back for Stevens to drill home, beating Hennessy at his near post when the Welsh keeper really ought to have saved. There were half-hearted chants of VAR. VAR from the away end when Uwe Wainemar nudged over James McArthur in the Brighton box but there was never any chance of Swarbrick getting busy. 
claim your free £30, but check out this new sign-up offer from Sunbet's Brighton word L to blow with Chelsea Loney Izzy Brown forced off injured Chris Hewton got the better of. Opposite number Roy Hodgson there appeared to be a slightly longer delay while Swarbrick checked Saka had won the ball cleanly, though, again, there was no serious suggestion of anything amiss. Brighton staged a concerted late effort to win it. A Sam Baldock shot crashed against a post, then Barham Kyle skied a glorious opportunity. His injured Brighton dealt massive blow as Izzy Brown suffers knee injury in the second minute of FA Cup clash. But when Brighton won a free kick on the left late on, March sent it. Wayne Amaya headed a cross goal, and Murray, innocent without having been proven guilty, was granted the winner. Controversy raged at the final whistle as Palace players surrounded Mariner demanding an explanation but there was none. What the VAR achieves it is not going to end football's rich history of post-match debating. Nottingham Forest 4-2 Arsenal, 10-man Reds knock FA Cup holders out in FA Cup third round shock.